This week in a conversation, I have the privilege to welcome author Brandy Cagle. She's the author of a very powerful fantasy novel titled Dreams of Darkness and Desire. But before we get into the video, I just want to remind everyone that it's important to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And if you do, don't forget to click the notification bell so that way every time a video is posted, it'll go directly into your portal. So let's get started. Again, my name is our Dan Isma, and I'm here this afternoon with an impeccable author. Her name is Brandy Cagle. She's the author of a compelling fantasy novel titled Dreams of Darkness and Desire. Brandy, welcome to the conversation. Thank you. It's great to be here. Okay. Uh, would you please tell the viewers of CSMS Magazine who is Brandy Cagle? I am someone who loves to read, um, have a big imagination, um, love of animals, nature. Um, I love to go out and ride my razor with my family when I'm not writing or reading. Um, I'm also a phlebotomist and a medical assistant, and that is um, my day job. And I, I mean, I, I love it, but the writing is, that's, that's my muse right there. <laughs> Great. Okay, so uh, exactly that brings us to Dreams of Darkness and Desire. It's a compelling story, um, painted beautifully, um, and the main character is very intriguing. It's Kyra Lockwood. And now, let me ask you this, because you mentioned uh, She's been hunted by someone from New Orleans. Is that the setting? Or... Yes, the setting is in New Orleans. And um, she is a second year at her freshman, I'm sorry, sophomore year at Tulane University. And so she is having these nightmares. And the person that is haunting her dreams with three other guys have just moved in down the street from her. Right. So from there, it is a whirlwind and a roller coaster rides of right. ups and downs and right. all the in-betweens. It's, it's There's something you said here that really struck my <laughs> attention. Yeah, uh, I believe that in order to, to ensure their immortality, Blake must complete the order of three. Yes. Which means claim her body, which means Kyra Lockwood. Yes. And also take her blood and end her life. Yes. That's pretty dramatic. Could you explain it further? It is. It is. Um, so Blake is a 400 plus year old warlock and he is from England and he has met um, Lars, which is second in charge. He is also from England and they have met Vincent and Armand in the time being and they have 
what they do. They basically are sacrificing witches to take their power for their own to build this so that they can go up against um, Kira, which is, of course, the main character. She is what they call the Super Virtuotum, which is the ultimate power, which is she has the ability to give them the absolute immortality. And during that time, of course, she does not know all of this at this time. Uh-huh. But as things go on, she uh-huh. is, she and Blake are attracted to each other and it's something undeniable. And, but she doesn't understand why he is doing the things that he is doing. And it just. And the story just, unfolds from there. Yeah. It, well, without any spoilers, it's just, you know, it, it is, um, we have a little bit of horror. We have suspense. We've okay. got. Um, we don't want to romantic talk tension. Yeah, it, we've got the whole package going in this one. Okay. Demons, you know, everything. Uh, we've got it all. You're not the uh, first fantasy writer that I mm-hmm. interview and this show. I like the magic into it. Mm-hmm. I have to be honest with you, Wendy. Uh, before I started talking to, and to all of these fantasy authors, I didn't have you know, I never, I did not fall in love with the genre of literature, but because I've been talking and reading so many fantasy novels, now I understand this is something that I personally, as a writer, I need to explore. But let me ask you this question, <laughs> because the story here uh, can easily be described as magical realism. Is is it? It could be. I mean, there is magic um, along the way. Um, Kira does start um, her magic does start coming out in different ways. Um, for instance, there is they are at the fair and she actually there is a young guy that is I guess he's being a little too forward with another girl and she actually imagines her hands around his throat and he falls to the ground and he's choking and of course then she sees Blake and her mind goes elsewhere and then that boy can breathe again but just little things start building up that she she doesn't really know it's her okay. and until till later on okay so now Wendy the three words I mean this is a very I would say that pretty strong and intriguing title dreams of darkness and desire all three words in other words the story is being summarized into three words. The nightmares, of course, when you see nightmare, in any nightmarish uh, uh, moment has darkness in it. But yet, she's loving uh, uh, the person who seemed to be uh, driving her crazy at night. So how did you manage to paint this story that way? Actually, um, I was... At the time I was working, um, traveling with the opioid epidemic, and I have been having these crazy nightmares myself. This is where it come from. (laughs) It came from from here. And so I just was having them so often I started writing them down. And I was talking to my sister one night and was telling her about it. And she says, well, you've always wanted to write a book. Why don't you write that book about it? Make a book about it. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So I bought it. I might have enough to make a, you know, a short story. Well, now it's turned into a trilogy. And then I have a prequel that I have, um, that I've had done also to pretty much, I guess, describe how all of this started. So it's turned into now four books, (laughs) but it is something that was happening to me. And I just made a story out of it and just added to it. And I just, I just love these characters and the story that has, gone on with it and we're gonna, we're gonna get to like that you said this is my baby <laughs> i love it we're gonna get to that in a minute but let me ask you something here so you 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 say that um a some of the nightmarish dreams that you were having um some somehow was the trigger behind yes you started thinking um I have to write this story. But let me ask you something. Dreams of Darkness and Desire is the first book in the trilogy or? Yes, the, the first. first. Yes. First one. 
Okay. So when did you decide to turn this story into a three-part story? Was that after you after you talked to your sister? Or? Oh no! Once I once I finished the book, it was it it it, it can't end here. There it's there's just there's more to there's more to tell. There's, there's just more to tell. yeah, there's more to tell. The story's not over, and that's something um, my arc readers they are loving the book, and I've gotten great reviews that they're leaving on Goodreads already. But I have left them with a pretty big cliffhanger. They hate it, but they also love it. <laughs> so like um, it. a cliffhanger, you know, it's one of those love-hate relationships. Uh, mm -hmm, I know. But it is a major, major cliffhanger. <laughs> but when the MES is thinking, this also be easily described as some sort of a romantic fantasy? Or... Um, there is romance in there, yes. Um, there is also just what we call just plano seduction. It's, it's all in there. Um, but... At the end, there is a major plot twist that no one will see coming. And of course, I can't tell you what that is, but it is um, definitely one of those, oh my goodness ah. moments. <laughs> so it was like, I did not see that coming. Okay. So that, that's, what, that's, that's what a good writer do, uh, does. Actually, when you keep uh, the reader, you know, on the hook. <laughs> yes, yes. You keep yes. turning the pages. Now, uh, I know there's something you say, I just want to read it because I just want to get it right. I am a reader, a writer. I am a creative, meaning creative, yes. creative writer. So my characters are my art. They live in my mind, my heart, and they seem to float on my very breath. So putting pen into paper allows me to make them real, to bring them to life. So yes. that's what every single writer does. But the way you put it, you know, it's so simple. It's so beautiful. It says, in essence, it says everything that's going on in the author's and writer's mind, especially mm -hmm. when you wake up in the morning and you know you have to get something you know, done on paper. Now, Wendy, when, when is the best time of the day or night for you to write? Because I know you work. Um, well, during the day, yes, I do work. When I get home, I try to get some writing done or editing, just get something done, whether it be social media to keep up. But I always make sure that every day I get, I get something done. And of course, my family... He has a side business on the weekend and my daughter works with him. So on the weekend, I have the house to myself. So that's mostly when I get most things done. Okay. So um, it is It is nice to have the time by yourself to get things done when nobody's bothering you. <laughs> you know, I wish my, my wife didn't hear that because the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, isn't that something? So, you know, when you marry a new writer, there's always this problem, you know. I, sometimes I just wait until she gets, you know, she starts snoring, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I get down to business. You know, that's interesting. But you, but I always, uh, you know, get the support that I need also from my spouse. But yes, it's, it's the same thing for you too, isn't it? It's the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. My daughter is seventeen, and um, she actually surprised me. She has come up with some great stories herself, and made these great storyboards and she's like okay i've got another one for you to write i said really okay okay uh, and they're and they're really good and and i plan to do this it's just I can't, one at a time one at wow. a time i said wow. if, if a person could get them out as fast as they come into your head that would be great but that's not that's not the way it is that's not how it happens but she has she has a pretty good imagination herself great you never know maybe Someday uh, she'll be like a legacy writer, well, you know, following mom's footsteps as that. I don't know. Right now she's going into the um, the animal world. She's she's into the animals, so we'll we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a side hobby, maybe. We'll see. Okay. Now, uh, Wendy, uh, this is something I always ask uh, my guests in the conversation. I know when the manuscript was completed, done, and set, then what? Who did you turn to? 
I'm sorry, say that again. When the story was over, oh. when your manuscript was done, so what happened? Because I know it's a moment of heavy palpitations. You know, wow, this is it. <laughs> so uh, where did well, you Well, things have not, well, things have gone great and things have not gone great um, with the process. Um, I did have a publisher and... Needless to say, that did not work out very well. Um, but I now have another one, which is working out a whole lot better. And I'm happy to also say that due to this change, which I'm very thankful for, I have actually been able to get Stina Nielsen. Um, she's the narrator of the From Blood and Ash series. Um, and also A Court of Thorns and Roses, by Jennifer L. Armantrout and um, Sarah Day Mass, two big, big time authors. And so she's going to be narrating my book. So that is probably the biggest thing that I can rave about right now. I'm just so excited about because she is, she is phenomenal. Um, so the end of October is hopefully when the book will be out. It was okay. supposed to come out on July the 3rd, but of course we had all these things happen. So we pushed it back, which is probably the best thing because with what's all in the book, around Halloween is probably a good time to put it out. So. Great. So um, it's something I always do every time in the conversation. I always ask my guests when we start talking about literature uh, to move into something a little light, lighter than that. Because I know you read a lot. And I know uh, there's a little bit of magic in your stories. So if I were to ask you who you consider as your preferred author, who would that be? Hmm. That is a toss-up between <laughs> Karen Marie Moaning and Sarah Day Mass and Jennifer L. Armentrout. That is that's a toss-up because all of their I don't think I can pick just one. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone said the same uh, thing, right? Uh, that's too hard. That's too hard. Um, because they all have the, the great series, and, and it's exactly what I like to read, and it's what I write. So it's that's, that's really it that hard. Way. That's really ah. hard. <laughs> okay. I'll take it that way. So now I know you have a husband, you have children. So, and I'm pretty sure that you cook for them too. And you, as a person, you have some <laughs> not, not when always, it comes to that. Not always. <laughs> so, buddy, listen now. <laughs> Help me. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean, not always? Not always. Um, um, there's a microwave. Um, Chef B. <laughs> <laughs> Take out. <laughs> yeah, I don't always cook. I don't like to cook. Okay, but at least, but you do have some preferred cuisine, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Which one? I uh, love Mexican. Love Mexican. You do? And I uh, love Italian. Okay. Probably, probably Italian is probably my favorite. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, I know you live in North Carolina, right? No, South Carolina. In South Carolina. Okay. Yes. My uh, sister's in North Carolina. Your sister's in North Carolina. <laughs> okay. I was uh, with the family not too long ago, about two years ago. We went to Myrtle Beach and we, we spent a weekend there and we went to that Mexican restaurant and the food was delicious. It's just like- Do you remember the name of it? I don't remember the name of it, but right here on the first coast of Florida where we live, there's something called Cinco de Mayo. It's, okay. It's a very popular brand of Mexican mm -hmm. restaurant. But the food we ordered it looks like that shredded chicken mm -hmm. and then with the uh, uh, a salad on the side. And they serve that also with, you know, when you go to a Mexican restaurant, there's always, uh, they give you this little teasers that you have, which is the- uh, uh, Chips and salsa. The chips and salsa, <laughs> exactly, you know? Yes, that's always good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we spend a very nice, uh, time in South Carolina that the wonderful weekend yeah and we went to that Mexican restaurant 
I, I don't remember the name. Well, of it. I, I came home. I tried hard to try to find uh, uh, to try to find uh, something like it. I could never find it. So yeah, we are in Garden City, um, right below Myrtle Beach. But um, we have El Cerro Grande as the restaurants that we have here that we go to. Okay. And they have quite a, they have quite a few of them around. Okay. So from cuisine, let's move into music. Mm. I am an 80s hard rock girl. <laughs> I, love my, I love my 80s hair bands, um, the hard rock, classic rock. Um, uh -huh. And I like mean, some of the pop music too, but I mean, there's music today that I like as well, but I'm mostly into my hard rock. Okay. Okay, now there come my last question, Wendy. No, you are a very impeccable writer. And I think that's what you would want for everyone to, who would want to embark upon a journey to teach the world using his pen. So what lesson would you give to anyone who, who would want to follow your path of becoming an impeccable white. Don't wait so long to do it. If that's what you want to do, chase your dream because your dream is not going to chase you. Do what makes you happy. And if that's what makes you happy, do it. And don't let anyone stand in your way. Just do it. You're not and the only one. Don't, don't, let, don't let anyone. I mean, you're going to have people, you know, that are going to leave a bad review. They may not like what you're, wrote and you can't please everyone but as long as you are pleasing yourself that's what is important beautiful beautiful a writer with a deep rooted yes condition. yes yes so with that i'm just gonna say it's been such a pleasure to have author brandy cagle end the conversation thank you